Hello everyone. Uh, today I take up a new question in uh, the topic of chart work and in today's question we'll discuss uh, how to solve questions that involve maintaining a minimum distance or a specified distance of uh, landmarks. Those landmarks could be edges of land, it could be lighthouses, recon, islands or uh, a normal light um, and uh, we'll take up a question here and uh, we'll need Australian chart 802 to solve this question. Uh, do not worry if you do not have the chart. Uh, go through the question, read the question, visualize how you would have solved this question if you had the chart available to you. So you can just draw uh, roughly on a piece of paper so that that gives you the confidence that if you get similar questions uh, on a different chart, you will be able to approach it using the right method. So if you have the chart, of course, feel free to go ahead and solve the question with me. Uh, the most important thing here is to note what is the right procedure, how to lay off courses, distances, how to measure bearings, uh, the basics of chart work. That is more important, uh, not solving the question, getting the answer, but to learn the basics of chart work uh, and uh, learn from it. So let's get started with the question. The question is in three parts. And the first part is that you have to determine the shortest course uh, and distance between a position 39 degrees south, uh, 146 degrees 15 minutes east, and uh, you have to go towards 38 degrees 50 minutes south and 145 degrees 50 minutes east. Uh, and, but uh, to do so, you have to ensure that the vessel passes a distance of at least three nautical miles off a lighthouse which is Cape Lip Trap Light. Now the shortest distance doesn't necessarily mean the safest distance. That is why you have to learn these principles that even when you are working on the ship and you are drawing courses, uh, of course we always say that the shortest distance is commercially the most viable one. But remember, uh, you also have to focus on the safest distance, not always the shortest distance. That is what is going to be taught to you in this question. Uh, part B of the question is once you determine the course and distance, you have to determine the time it will take for a vessel to travel this distance, the total distance at the following speeds. So the speeds mentioned are 20 knots, 16 knots and 7.6 knots. And this is of course 20 knots per hour, 16 knots per hour and 7.6 knots per hour. That is the speed of the vessel and you have to determine how much time it will take for you to travel the distance that you have derived in part A of the question. Finally, part C uh, asks you to find the time and date of arrival for each speed that is 20 knots, 16 knots and 7.6 knots if the vessel commenced its voyage from the departing position at 23.30 hours on the 3rd of May. All right. So this is, a, uh, this is a very good question to take up because on the ship also you have to find the ETA, the estimated time of arrival and the captain may ask you to find the estimated time of arrival uh, if you are at a certain position. So if you know the distance, you know the steaming time or you know the different steaming times based on your ship's speed, you can provide the captain with an indication of the estimated time to arrival. So that is the uh, question is very practical in this sense. So like I said before, look at the basics of chart work, follow the basics here, learn uh, how to approach such questions more about, it's not about you working together with me. So even if you don't have the chart, focus on the basics here, learn to get the basics right, then you will be applied, you will be able to apply those basics to any of the similar chart work questions for which you may have the charts. So let's get started with today's question. All right, so of course, uh, if you look at the question, the first thing you have to do is you have to draw the two positions that are given to you and you have to proceed in the right direction. So the first position is of course 39 degrees south and 146 degrees 15, which will be pretty straightforward. You can see this is 39 degrees south, so there is a horizontal line drawn already. So you don't have to worry about drawing the horizontal line. What you should be drawing is a 146 degrees 15 minutes. So if you look at your uh, uh, longitudes, so you can see here, uh, I put my inside edge of the parallel ruler in line with the longitude. So this is the longitude. Right, so this is my longitude 146 15 degrees is here. So if you if you can see this is 146 degrees, then 5, then 10, then 15. So all I have to do is just draw a line 
uh, vertical line onto the latitude of 39 degrees south so of course I didn't have to draw it again uh, the longitude was drawn as well so this is my first position right and then from there I have to go to 38 degrees 50 minutes south and 145 degrees uh, 50 minutes east all right so there's a little trick to drawing this position I'll just tell you why and uh, from this position you have to go to that position because that's a second position given to you right so 38 degrees 50 minutes is uh, pretty straight off if you look at the latitude here what I'll do is I'll draw I put my parallel ruler in line with the latitude of 39 degrees south the inside edge of the parallel ruler I'm using and then I'll draw 38 degrees 50 minutes so 38 degrees 50 minutes will be somewhere here you can see the markings are already given here so so see my parallel ruler moved so make sure that your parallel ruler doesn't move while you're moving it and like I said uh, because I don't I have not done chart work for a long time my parallel ruler does tend to move every now and then so I have to be very mindful of going very slow so 38 degrees 50 minutes is somewhere here right so you can draw the latitude here but you can see I'm drawing it towards the outer edge of the chart and why I'm doing that is because the longitude is which is given to me is uh, 145 degrees 50 minutes so if you look at the edge of the chart here 145 degrees 50 minutes uh, this is 146 degrees so this means this is 145 59 58 57 56 55 54 53 52 is given but not 50 so you have to extend the chart this way which I have done already to save you some time and then you have to make sure that uh, you draw the so yeah you need two more so you've got till 54 52 you don't have 50 so what I'll do is I'll measure uh, two minutes here and from the edge of 52 I'll draw this here so if if 50 was here on this chart that's where 50 would be right so this is the line that this is the point that denotes uh, 145 50 so you have 50 here then uh, 51 somewhere in the middle 52 53 54 55 I don't need 51 that's why I'm not drawn 51 so I have measured two minutes and I have put it on the edge of 52 minutes so that I get 50 minutes here so now if I draw a perpendicular line from this position then I can get a I can get the longitude of uh, 145 degrees and 50 minutes so that's why I took up this question today just to show you that sometimes uh, even when on the ship you are transferring positions from one chart to the other sometimes you may have a situation where a particular longitude may be just out of scale so don't don't worry about that just draw it to scale because see in Mercator charts longitudes are equidistant placed so you have nothing nothing to worry about you can just measure the longitudes so I'll just go a little bit more and uh, this I get my position here so this is my second position so I've got my two positions now right now I have to draw the course uh, between these two positions but before I do that so I cannot join these two positions directly right firstly because uh, this uh, course line is taking me over land and ships can't go over land so it's not possible the second reason I don't do the shortest course is and remember the question says determine the shortest course and distance but you also have to ensure that the vessel passes three nautical miles off Cape Lip Trap Light. So Cape Lip Trap Light is here. Uh, this is your Cape Lip Trap Light, right? So you have to pass three nautical miles off it. So you have to measure three nautical miles on the chart. Uh, one, two and three nautical miles. Okay, this is three. So this is one. 2, 3, 4, 5 because it's 55 and this is 39 so 55, 56, 57, 58, 59 then 39 that's why each uh, each uh, bigger division is a minute and the ones in the middle is 0.2 so I mean like one mile each and then the ones in the middle are 0.2 of a mile so you've got three nautical miles on the chart so I will draw it, draw it from the Cape Lip Trap Lighthouse right so ideally you should be drawing it from the edge of the land all right to give yourself more safety you should draw it from the edge of the line but because the question says keep cape lip trap lighthouse i will draw it from the lighthouse because uh, that's the reference point but if you measure it of the land it gives you some more safety margin that's all right we go as per the question so this is your three nautical miles uh, radius that you have to follow so you can draw it all the way here 
so you have to ensure that you are always you are passing three nautical miles off the uh, island uh, of cape lip trap lighthouse so to do that you have to now reach this position from this position you have to reach this position here in probably two courses so the first course that i will draw uh, will be joining this position my first position somewhere here and i will get my course so what i'll do is i'll keep going here right so this is my first course because i'll pass uh, three nautical miles off uh, the cape island lighthouse so what i'll do is once i draw the course i will measure the course and again like i said you can see i'm a bit slow here so if i measure it from the inside of the edge uh, course i get is about 279 uh, 279 280 rather so i am getting 280 degrees true course here right so 280 degrees true course and then now i have to measure the distance so now that you have drawn the course 280 degrees uh, you must be wondering till what time do i go on this course so it's simple uh, you have to reach uh, this position here and you have to always make sure that you are to uh, three nautical miles of the cape lip trap lighthouse so you have to just draw the course uh, so you have to make sure that you go on a course of 280 till you are forming a tangential point uh, with the destination in mind so what i have done is i have taken the inside edge of my ruler inside edge of the ruler and i put it as a tangent to the uh, circle which is denoting three nautical miles all right so because that pretty much ensures that i will always be three nautical miles of the lighthouse and yet i will be drawing the shortest course between these two positions so what i'll do is i'll join and the uh, destination point which is this point here and making sure it's a tangent to the three nautical miles radius and uh, this is my second course so here i will alter the course from this point because from this point i am on a tangential course to my point of destination so i will measure my second course as well and uh, let's see what my second course is so my second course again i don't want to tell you how i measured my second course because i put the inside edge of the parallel ruler and then i bring it to the compass rose and i measure my second course which is about uh, three four seven degrees so i will write three four seven degrees two here right three four seven degrees two now all i have to do is measure the distances involved so i'll measure the distance involving in the second leg of the course first because it's smaller so i will measure this distance here and i will put it here and see how much is the distance so my distance is one two three four five six seven point three seven point three nautical miles and uh, let's see the distance involved in the first leg so i will join the i will measure it straight off although it's a bit longer distance but i'll measure it straight off and then I will put it here somewhere and see how much distance I get. So how much do I get? 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18 point, uh, 18 point, just 18 nautical miles in my opinion. It's about 18 nautical miles. So I'll put 18 nautical miles here. So you've got 18 nautical miles here and then 7. So now the final uh, leg of the question is that uh, you've got two courses here. So you've got 280 degrees uh, going for 18 miles and you've got 347 degrees going for 7.3 nautical miles, right? So these are the two distances, of course, you will have to travel. So your distance, total distance will be 18 plus 7.3, which is 25.3 nautical miles that's the distance to travel total distance to travel right so this is total distance to travel now part b of the question says how much uh, time will it take if you are traveling at 20 knots so you've got your distance as 25.3 you've got your speed so for time to travel is equal to total distance upon speed which in this case is 25.3 nautical miles divided by 20 knots so you will take one hour and 16 minutes 
all right so if i have to show you on the calculator this is what you will be doing 25.3 divided by 16 or rather sorry divided by 20 not 20 knots you will get this 1.265 all you have to do is just change this to 1 hour and 16 minutes so this 15 minutes 54 seconds just round it off to 16 minutes all right similarly if you have to go at 16 knots now your time will be again distance by speed so i don't want to write that formula again 25.3 divided by sorry 16 which is equal to 1 hour 35 minutes again if i have to put it in the calculator so 25.3 divided by 16 knots is equal to 1.58 which is 1 hour and 35 minutes if you round it off all right you're getting the idea now so i don't have to show you the calculation the third speed given is 7.6 knots so your total time to travel is 25.3 divided by 7.6 which is equal to you will get somewhere around 3 hours and 20 minutes if you round it off all right so this is the part b of the question part c you are saying that you are departing your first position so you are departing uh, this position here at about 3rd of may 23 30 hours you are departing right so uh, when will you reach your uh, destination which is this position here when will you reach your destination after traveling 25.3 nautical miles so all you have to do is take uh, time from each case above so if i was traveling at 20 knots i would take one hour and 16 minutes so i would be reaching at so this is 3rd of may 2330 I will be adding 1 hour 16 minutes so I will be reaching at 46 minutes and this is 24 there is nothing known as 24 so it's 00, 0 on the next day so 4th of May 0, 0, 0046 is when I will be reaching if I am going at 20 knots right if I am going at 16 knots I will take 1 hour and 35 minutes so again I am departing on 3rd 2330 I will take 1 hour 35 minutes so of course this is 65 there's nothing known as 65 you don't have more than 60 minutes so this becomes 05 and this goes here so this is 25 there's nothing known as 25 so it's 01 so 1 hour 05 minutes so this is again on the 4th of may so 1 am in the morning is when i'll reach and finally in the third case if i'm going at 7.6 knots i'll be taking 3 hours and 20 minutes to arrive at my destination so if i depart at third i depart at 2330 and i take three hours and 20 minutes so every in each case i'm adding the hours right so if i add 50 this becomes 26 there's nothing known as 26 i will subtract it from 24 so 2 a.m in 2 uh, 2 50 in the morning on the 4th of may is when i will reach my final destination if i'm traveling at 7.6 knots all right so guys uh, thank you for watching uh, uh, these are the three parts of the question i hope you got an idea of how to solve these questions your answers may slightly differ from mine but not too much uh, so if you have the chart work it out otherwise uh, you have an idea of how to work out these questions if you get a question like this it's pretty straightforward common sense uh, let me know if you have any questions i look forward to your comments and feedback uh, it helps me to improve the future videos bye and thanks for watching